What if the missing link between your stubborn bloating, low energy, and cloudy mood is a single gut-made molecule you can boost with the way you eat? Welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. Stay informed with quick, easy to listen summaries of our latest articles, perfect for when you're on the go. No reading required. Subscribe for free at Mercola.com for the latest health insights. Hello, and welcome to Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. I'm Ethan Foster, and today we're examining Beauty Rate, the short chain fatty acid your gut bacteria produce when you feed them the right fibers and why your digestion, immunity, metabolic balance, and even brain depend on it. I'm Alara Skye, and we'll keep this practical. You'll hear what Biaterate does for your colon cells, how it supports a strong gut barrier, and stepwise ways you can safely increase butyrate production through food, especially if your gut is sensitive right now. Let's start with the basics. When you eat fiber and it reaches your colon, certain microbes ferment it and release butyrate. Your colon cells use beauty rate as a primary fuel, which helps maintain tight junctions, so larger particles, bacteria, and toxins don't pass into your bloodstream and trigger systemic inflammation. Exactly. When beauty rate is low, that barrier weakens. More unwanted particles slip through, your immune system stays on high alert, and inflammation ripples beyond your gut to metabolism and mood. Butyrate has been shown to calm inflammation in the colon and support repair in inflammatory bowel disease, which is one reason stable production matters. You also make better choices when you know which bacteria help. Strains like Ficolobacterium prausnitzii and Roseburia thrive on fiber-rich eating patterns and other butyrate-linked organisms, including Eubacterium and Eisenbergiella, connect gut activity to brain outcomes. In fact, Butyrate can cross your blood-brain barrier, and butyrate-producing profiles are associated with lower Alzheimer's risk. The protective reach extends further. In the colon, well-fueled cells follow healthy life and death cycles. Butyrate encourages damaged cells to undergo apoptosis, the programmed self-destruct process, helping reduce the chance that abnormal cells progress toward colorectal cancer. Now, listeners often ask, should I just add more fiber? The answer is yes, but with a clear strategy. If your gut is robust, you can increase a variety of fibers from vegetables, fruits, whole grains, and beans, so your microbes have consistent raw material to ferment into butyrate. If your gut is currently reactive, bloating, discomfort, irregularity, go slower. Add fiber gradually to avoid excess endotoxin production, which stresses your mitochondria and makes you feel worse. The goal is to support both your microbes and your cellular energy, so beauty rate production scales up comfortably. Diversity matters. When you rotate different plant foods, you feed a broader set of microbes, which improves resilience. Fermented foods also help by delivering live cultures. Yogurt with live cultures made from grass-fed milk, kefir, sauerkraut, and kimchi. They repopulate your gut with allies that contribute to a healthier beauty rate output. There's a nuance with carbohydrates. Most adults do well in the range of about 200 to 350 grams of healthy carbohydrates daily to support cellular energy. Carbs aren't the enemy here. The right types and the right sequence for your current gut status are the on-ramp to higher butyrate. If you're sensitive, begin with simpler options that your system tolerates. White rice, whole fruits, or fruit juices with pulp. If your gut is severely compromised, a short stint, one to two weeks of small sips of dextrose, glucose. Water can stabilize energy while your gut calms. That's a temporary bridge, not a destination. From there, you expand. After rice and fruit, move to root vegetables. Then add non-starchy vegetables, followed by starchy choices like sweet potato or squash, then beans and legumes and eventually minimally processed whole grains. Each step increases fermentable substrate for butyrate without overwhelming you. Resistant starch deserves a mention. When you cook and cool potatoes or rice, some starch becomes resistant to digestion in the small intestine and reaches your colon intact, prime food for butyrate producing microbes. That's another lever you can use once your gut is ready. A quick note on food sources of butyrate, you also ingest small amounts directly from foods like grass-fed butter and ghee. They're supportive, but the primary strategy is still feeding the microbes that generate butyrate for you, day in and day out. 
Let's connect this to metabolic health. Healthy beauty rate levels linked to improved weight regulation and better blood sugar control. Beauty rate influences hunger and satiety signaling, helping you feel satisfied. When you combine that with a steady, diverse intake of fermentable fibers, your post-meal balance tends to stabilize. And brain health remains a critical takeaway. Because butyrate can reach your brain, patterns associated with higher butyrate production correlate with reduced cognitive decline risk. That doesn't substitute for medical care, but it strengthens the case for dietary diversity and gradual, sustained fiber increases. We should also highlight the gut barrier's mucus layer. Adequate butyrate supports this layer, so food is broken into smaller particles before absorption. That reduces immune overactivation and helps you maintain selectivity, absorbing nutrients while blocking pathogens and toxins. To make this actionable, think in phases. Phase one, if you're sensitive, stabilize with simple carbs you tolerate and avoid ramping fiber too fast. Phase two, introduce fermented foods along with a wider rotation of fruits and vegetables. Phase three, layer in beans, legumes, and minimally processed whole grains for even more fermentable variety. As you do this, watch your signals. Less bloating, more regularity, steadier energy, and improved comfort after meals. Those are practical indicators that butyrate production and barrier function are moving in the right direction. One more element is your mitochondria. When you reduce exposures that impair cellular energy and give your cells steady, appropriate fuel, the environment in your colon becomes more welcoming to beneficial microbes. That synergy, better mitochondrial function plus diversified fiber, raises butyrate in a sustainable way. Let's finish with a clear next step you can use today. Choose one meal and add a new fiber-rich plant you haven't eaten this week. If you're sensitive, make the portion small and pair it with a fermented food you tolerate. Keep a simple note of how you feel two to four hours later and use that feedback to guide tomorrow's choice. Your challenge is to build a seven-day rotation that includes at least 10 different fiber sources and two fermented foods, starting at a level your gut can handle and increasing gradually. If you're currently very reactive, begin with the simplest carbohydrates for one to two weeks, then step into variety. You're training your microbes to make more butyrate and your cells to use that momentum. Thank you for watching Dr. Mercola's Cellular Wisdom. We'll see you on the next episode. Thanks for watching. Subscribe now and click the notification bell so you never miss an update. See you in the next video.